Hey, what's up, you amazing hackers? I hope you're all doing well today. So basically, server-side template injection, in my opinion, is an invaluable part of your toolkit as a bug bounty hunter. Server-side template injection can occur because of a technique developers use to solve the issue of dynamic page generations. Some websites take user input or calculated values and place them in a template that is ready to be served to the site visitors. You might wonder why templating engines even exist, and so did I. Well, it turns out templating engines on the server help speed up the process of programming by using smaller tokens and syntax. Templating engines can help us add logic and variables to our templates. While these are beautiful positives, there are of course also some negatives to using these templating engines, and we as bug bounty hunters can use that to our advantage. The biggest negative to using server-side templating engines is the security aspect, in my opinion. I often warn you guys that integration points are places where security vulnerabilities happen, and this is one of the clearest examples I can think of. Since templating engines run on the server and sometimes use variables that may be user-supplied, these engines need to grab that data from somewhere. Since templating engines are running a standalone server that take that input, there's no inherent security rules defined. So that means that's all very fancy language for saying that developers need to implement filters. They need to filter the user data properly or they, uh, the user might supply commands to the templating engine and the templating engine will non-discriminately take that input and execute the command if the developer didn't implement their filter properly, of course. Now, I do not want to take down any developer. Developers have my deepest respect. I've developed for many years myself and I know how hard it is. That being said, as a developer, I also know that I have a natural tendency to implement filtering mechanisms improperly due to the nature of these filtering mechanisms. Often, these filters are blacklist based, meaning that the developer creates a configuration file and the, configura ugh, sorry guys, the configuration file will state what characters or sequences of characters are not allowed to be entered. If the developer forgets one of the characters that we can use to construct an SSTI attack, or if the uh, developer, uh, if he forgets or she forgets to implement the filtering mechanism on one particular endpoint because that functionality might have been developed later, we have our entry point for SSTI. Um, SSTI can occur in plain text and in context mode, uh, in code contexts, I mean, sorry. Um, what does this mean specifically for us? Um, that's a bit out of sight of the scope of this document, but we'll go into that in a separate chapter and video. For now, what you need to know is how can we test for SSTIs? And since we already know the basics of how they occur, uh, and the strategy we'll, we will take on the topic is very similar to our cross-site scripting and text strategy. We are pretty much banking on the fact that integration points make it easy to forget and apply correct filtering. For a full attack, attack strategy, we want to detect SSTI as soon as possible, identify the templating engine being used, and finally exploit it. So let's dive a little bit deeper into those topics separately. Um, for detection, we can use a basic attack vector. So we want to insert our attack vector as soon as possible. We've talked about this a couple of times on the channel already. This will make detection down the, li down the line as likely as possible. And the reason for that is very simple. As you test the application, the templating engine might use any of the saved variables that you have. Uh, and if it's the attack vector and the developer forgets to implement the filtering properly, we will have an entry point. As a basic attack vector, um, I'm going with the same attack vector that Portswigger recommends, which is a dollar sign squirrely bracket seven times seven squirrely bracket closed. This attack vector will allow for the broadest detection possible as we use characters that are used in the most prevalent templating engines. When the server doesn't return our original attack vector, so when it returns something different from our do dollar sign squirrely bracket seven times seven closed squirrely brackets, we have likely detected an SSTI or a CSTI. Now, CSTI is a topic for a different video and we'll get into that later. For now, we'll focus on SSTI. So 
if we've detected SSTI, we'll need to identify which templating engine is being used. Why do we have to do that? So we can craft a custom attack factor and we can prove our impact. To identify our templating engine, we will base our strategy on the excellent research done by James Kettle for Port Swigger. So basically, if you have detected an SSTI, your next step is going to be to detect what templating engine that's being used. And for that, you can enter the attack string of squirrely bracket, squirrely bracket, seven times seven, closing squirrely bracket, closing squirrely bracket. If you get 49 back, move on to the next step. If you get the original attack factor back, the templating engine is not going to be vulnerable and you should move on to something entirely different. You might also get 7777, seven, seven, seven. so 7 times 7 uh, written back literally, so not a calculation. That's also a possibility to get more into that uh, side of the field. Uh, our next step is going to be our next attack factor which will be a double squirrely bracket again. And then you enter seven and you enter a single quote times seven single quote again, closing squirrely brackets. Now this might be a little bit abstract for you guys to follow. No problem, I'm going to put these attack factors in the description below as well. If you get a 49 back from this, the templating engine is going to be Twig and you should move on to the exploit chapter. If you get seven times seven back, so the literal seven times seven string, the templating engine is going to be Jinja 2 and you should move on to the exploiting part as well. If neither get returned, um, it's probably not vulnerable, so you can move on to the next step, which is going to be our next attack factor, which will be a squirrely bracket star comment star, closing squirrely bracket and then a B. Now, if this resolves, your templating engine is going to be smarty. If it doesn't resolve, move on to the last step. And the last step is a pretty advanced attack factor. I'm going to put it in the description again. So you have a dollar sign, squirrely bracket, double quote, Z, double quote, dot join, squirrely bracket, double quote, A, B, double quote, closing squirrely brackets. Now that's a pretty advanced attack factor. If it resolves, the templating engine is going to be Mako. If it doesn't resolve, it's probably not an SSTI and we should move on to the CSTI part. Again, for another video. Now for the exploiting, if you've figured out which templating engine is going to be used, you're going to need to write an exploit for it. And it's highly dependent again on which templating engine is being used. Your first step is probably going to be to look up the manual of the templating engine you identified. And these manuals will usually contain details to what security measures should be taken uh, and also how insecure your specific templating engine can be. You can also refer to an article I put in the description below. It will continue where we left off from the exploit uh, and it's the research that I've already referred to done by James Kettle on Portswigger. And here he explains for each templating engine how you can exploit it and which steps you have to take. So that was it for SSTI. It's pretty new. SSTI is not a vulnerability that has been out for long, which only means that there is more optional options for you guys to do research on the topic. And the more research you do, the more complete of a picture of SSTI we can get. And I also want to nudge you guys in the direction of doing research because I am convinced that there are still a whole lot of security vulnerabilities that need to be researched. And we haven't found everything yet at all. And especially with these templating engines coming on, all of these new technologies like Angular, Vue.js, all beautiful, all really quick to program in. But I'm not convinced these things don't have any security vulnerabilities. It's just a matter of time. And if you guys think you're up for the challenge, I would highly recommend that you just try it, you know. Just look at the source code of all of these things, if they are open source, of course. Um, Angular is open source, so you can just look at the source code and how it works internally. It's beautiful and there are so many options for cross-site scripting that haven't been discovered yet. So if you do want to do some original research, this might be the step for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. This was part of my SSTI series, so uh, of my templating injection series. I mean, of course, 
CSTI is coming up soon as well, which is also an even more interesting vulnerability if you ask me, so stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed the video for this long, you are an absolute legend and I would like to thank you very much for being here. I hope you have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody!